Well, hi everyone. Um, I'm on my boat in the galley. <laughs> oh, I wonder how many films have been made in a galley. Um, we're talking about the Kine Exacta. Now, the Kine Exacta got the name Kine because of cin cinema. Um, the cinema, of course, because of 35mm film. Uh, that's basically it, really. Um, that's why it's the Kine Exacta. What's special about it? Well, there's an awful lot very special. Firstly, I'll tell you a little bit about the factory. The company started in 1912. The factory closed down in 1918 because of the economy, the German economy. It started again in 1925. They worked and worked. They were working on wooden cameras mainly and the carpenters virtually ran the company um, then in 1939 they virtually had to close because of the war they actually did close in 1940 they were working on uh, we don't really know what something secret for the Wehrmacht um, don't know if it was cameras I don't think so because as far as I know there were no kine exactors made between um, 39 and 45 the company then or the factory was bombed in, bombed in 1945 restarted manufacture but of course by that time they were in uh, East Germany so really it was a Russian company because um, they took it over they then later on I think it was 1969 they merged with Pentacon, or were bought by Pentacon, I'm not sure which. But anyway, that was the end, uh, really, of the Exacta uh, as we know it. So that's really the history of the factory. Now, the camera, the camera itself. Well, in 1933, the Exacta A was made. Now, the Exacta A was a single-end reflex camera. By far, not, not by the first, by far, because even the Exacta company were making single-lens reflex box cameras. The camera made in 1933 worked on 127 film. And in 1936, the first 35mm single-lens reflex Exacta was made and launched very successfully. Although... The great dispute between amateurs and, uh, and professionals alike, and collectors, is was it the first? Well, I don't think it was from my research. It was, uh, there were one or two others, really ugly cameras like this one. Well, I mean, would you really want to buy a camera that looked like that? Um, this followed very closely on and was the first successful 35 millimeter single length reflex. So how do we know a Kine Exacta? Well, Kine Exacta has a magnifying glass on it. It's a very strange shape, as you can see. The very first ones had a round magnifier on it. And those are incredibly difficult to find. If you find one, buy it. I won't say whatever the price, but if you certainly if you can get it under, I would say a thousand pounds, fifteen hundred pounds, could take it. You never know; you might find one at a flea market tomorrow, or whenever a flea market is. So, basically, a thirty-five millimeter camera that had no link between the lens and the camera, so nothing was automatic. So think about it, you guys. You have to focus, take your meter reading, set the shutter speed you want, set, then close down the aperture so you can take a picture. But then, of course, you can't see a lot if you're a closed aperture because it's all gone dark. Anyway, that's what you'd do. You would then look again and realize you can't see anything you still can't see anything because the mirror hasn't come back up now all modern cameras the mirror come the mirror goes up and back down again so you can still see 
like the modern exactors. I mean, you can actually hear the difference. Hang on a minute. See if you can hear the difference between this and this. This one, not too bad. Now, modern exactor, or more modern exactor. All right, got that? Now, a lot louder. Now, the other thing you may have noticed through this is that everything is worked with the left hand. Left hand wind on, left hand um, button to op operate the shutter. Um, everything is left hand. The film goes from the right hand side to the left hand side, so the cassette um, goes in on the right. Well, I suppose it's normal it's left hand. You know, it's like, it's like the way they drive really, isn't it? They drive on the right hand side, so it's left hand drive over there. Now, as, as well as the exacta, there's the exa, which is, is his younger brother, sister, or oh, we're going to get into trouble, or oh, neutral gender, gender neutral, whatever they say these days. I don't think I have to stay, I have to stay correct. Um, so that's his actor. Now let's have a look how it operates. Shutter speed works here. You lift up the button and turn it in the direction of the direction of the arrow. Now it's quite an exceptional camera for shutter speeds because this one at the, at the time, um, this one was exceptional because it uh, went from 25th of a second to a thousandth of a second. Now a thousandth of a second was incredible at that era, in that era. It also had another button that would allow you to set the exposure up to 12 seconds. Now to do that you would have to wind on, set the the this this button to B. I can't find it. That is B, right? So we set it to B, and then we wind up the clockwork mechanism on the right hand side, and we set with this button. You have to lift it. It's not that easy to do, actually. You have to lift it up and turn it to the desired number and then if you can hear that this wheel on the right hand side is moving I'll do a close up and there it's just closed the shutter don't you might see I've kept my finger on the button all the time so what you would have to do is have a cable release that you can tighten up so it doesn't let off because as soon as you let the B off of course um, it will close the shutter so you can do that up to 12 seconds now how many cameras will do that certainly in that era now let's have a look inside as I say that no, we're firstly finished outside as I say um, the f-stop very simple the focus also very simple so you've only got two rings to worry about and the uh, and the shutter speed other than that pretty simple I'll just close this up by the way the camera won't work at all if that viewer is not open now I was lucky I found a couple on the internet where the guy said they weren't working described as the camera not working they were in fact working he just didn't try it with the view of finder up now I repair cameras a little bit I play with them um, so I wasn't worried about buying something that didn't work I know the camera quite well and there are a lot of tutorials on the internet so I wasn't too worried about buying them and I got them quite cheap uh, I know what's quite cheap well certainly under a hundred pounds which is cheap now we're going to open the back and that opens there now be careful when you do it because the whole back comes off now on later models of course there was a hinge again you'll notice on the inside the sprockets are on this side whereas all the cameras normal 35mm cameras the sprockets are up here because as I said it's pulling the film from this side to the left hand side 
the wrong way around of course. Now the other great advantage this spool will come out and a cassette will go in and a cassette goes in there with the unexposed film so it will be feeding into a cassette with exposed film. What's the advantage of that? Well, <laughs> and I made use of this. Don't forget, I had one of these cameras um, when I was about 14. Um, if you unscrew this, this little button, you can pull a blade across and it's razor sharp, this blade. You have to be careful. Um, so you pull the blade across and it cuts the film. So you have this wonderful thing where you have unexposed film in one cassette, exposed film in the other cassette. So what you could do, don't forget this didn't have automatic exposure, it didn't have automatic uh, DIN or ASA. You could take your film out half used. Sorry, take your film out of this side half used take that side out, put another cassette in this side and put a different film in this. It might be uh, you've gone from uh, what something DIN to something DIN a much higher. I mean in ASA I'd be saving, saying 125 ASA and I'd be putting in a 1000 ASA film. Or I could put in a colour film or a black and white film. So it gave me or gives me the possibility of saving a lot of money and when you're 13 years old you use it. I had cassettes all over. You just have to be careful to mark them right. There's a little rewind here. Another little identification of the kinney um, is this. Now on this button, the big one, you, the clockwork one, there's a little ridge or canal if you like between two knurled parts that's the real sign of a kinney exactor as well as the serial number which is here uh, this one's 532276 I have another one here um, which is 543 Four eight four. Now the Kinney Exactor also, so you can identify, helps identify on the back cover has Hiyaji embossed on that leather. If it is leather, I presume it must be must be leather at this uh, this era. Um, so that's always a sign as well as a, as a pre-war camera. Now pre-war cameras are more expensive. It's, everyone wants a pre-war exacta. Um, I'm lucky enough to have two here. I bought one for parts. So there you go. There it is. The exacta. What would it cost? If you're lucky you can pick one up at a boot sale but however lucky you are, I mean, basically you could, I mean, I've picked them up in boot sales, um, but it was 25 years ago, um, for a fiver. For a really good example, with, with the round magnifier, you might have to pay up to a thousand pounds. But that would be a really good example. That's it, really. That's the exacta. What should we do now? What should we do next? I'll tell you what, we'll do the little hit camera. We'll do, um, because there are sort of 200 different types, it's the hit type camera, not the, well I've got a hit camera, I'll show you. Well here it is. Now that really is, try and get a bit closer if it's going to want to focus. Um, there we are. That really is a camera. Now there are about 200 of those, um, 200 different types. So. There you go. I hope to see you soon. Cheers.